Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, you'll notice we're not in the studio. We're actually at Boffix Towers over in Derby. Why is that, you say? Well, it's had a bit of a makeover. Part of that makeover is we're looking at what's called HMO, and we're gonna understand and talk about that in a lot more detail in a moment. But first of all, let's figure out what we're gonna do in this video. In this video, we're gonna give you a tour of this building. I'm gonna introduce you to an expert of this field so you can get a little bit more information and also understand what's on her channel if you are interested in HMO at all. And then we're gonna look at what software can do to help us with this issue. So join me as we go and have a look at what HMO means for Boffix and potentially for you. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about HMO. What does that stand for? Well, we're gonna get an expert in to tell you exactly what that means. Speaking of the expert herself, let's introduce the one and only Kimberly Shapcott. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Aaron. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the words HMO. Now, when I first started, I had no idea what it means. Do you want to give the audience a bit of an insight on what HMO stands for? So HMOs are houses of multiple occupation. And you might still say, what the hell does that mean? Well, that means that you've got a property, but instead of just renting it to one person or one family, you're now renting each individual room to a separate person. So now a four bed house becomes a four separate tenancy house. So you've got four individual people who are not connected by any measure at all. So it's great for income because you generally are going to find you get a little more. But I think HMOs are becoming really popular, haven't they? Especially how you were describing it about converting some sort of residential property into multiple residential pro properties, essentially. Why do you think that's so popular at the moment? Well, one of the reasons that people go down a HMO route is definitely to do with the cash flow. Because if you've got a property, whether it be a house or a flat, and if you just rent it to maybe one family for £600 a month, that's great, that's your income. But if you've got a house where you could maybe have four rooms that you're letting out, well, that £600 could suddenly be £1,200. So the income you're getting from the property is a lot more. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to get all that money. <laughs> Don't think that for a second, because unfortunately there's probably a few more costs, but generally you may find that you're actually better off and getting more profits, more cash flow by letting it to more people. Exciting. All right, I think we should have a tour of this building and let us know a little bit more of those little insights there. Let's have a look. Okay, Kimberly, so you mentioned how we convert various rooms into other rooms. And this is an example of what we're doing here. So to come in here, as you can see, excuse the echo, um, you'll notice that we've kind of converted it from an office space. And I'll put some photos of what that office space looks like. And now we've got this room just here. Can you explain to them what sort of challenges and everything else and what they need to think about if they are going to convert a big room into lots of little rooms? Well, the key thing for most spaces is room size. For yeah. a HMO, there are defined spaces, minimum size standards. So for any HMO, you've got to check that you've either got 6.4 or it's around 8.5 okay. meters square. Need to check on your area because different areas of the country do have slightly different minimum yeah. standards, but there is a nationwide minimum that you have to have in rooms. And you've also got to watch that for things like, if you've got cupboard spaces, then that might not count towards it yeah. if it's built in cupboards, whereas if it's a wardrobe in a room, you would count the space. So there's certain very techy details there. Not too difficult, but if you get it wrong, yeah. it can be a problem. And with some existing properties, you do sometimes find that where you've got three good sized rooms and one nursery room, I think yeah. they always tended to call them. Those smallest rooms may not be of the minimum size. So if you do get to a licensing point of view, you may not be able to let that room. So you've just got to watch what you are buying and what your plans are to make sure you don't find it doesn't fit the criteria. All right, so you mentioned about the fact that this could be quite a costly exercise and you know, it's all about making profit and everything. How are you making sure that your clients are keeping on top of their costs and their projects to make sure that they are actually making money out of this and not just spending money willy-nilly? Well, obviously one of the key things to any build is finding a good builder and finding someone who you can work with and 
talk and communicate with well. And that's kind of going to be one of those key areas of making sure you're getting the right yep. person involved. But obviously, as well as getting the right person involved, yep. you need to keep track of what you are actually spending. So the key thing there is making sure you're finding the right sort of software that is actually going to keep track of what you're spending, how you're spending it. And I know with a lot of the softwares we talk about and have talked on different videos on your channel, on my channel, that if you find the right software, you can get bank feeds set up, you can get photos of the invoices. So it really does make it as straightforward as yeah. possible to keep on top of your costs because obviously with any project this sort of scale that we're looking at, and even a smaller project like the ones I'm doing with seven bed conversions, it costs quite a bit of money to do these things. You don't want to be spending even more <laughs> than you need to on them. And especially in the current climate, costs are going up as cost of living is one of those topics that is very prevalent at the yeah. moment. Yeah. So we've all seen it in the building trade that costs are going up. So keeping on top of them is ever more important and having the right sort of solution in place to keep track of those, again, even more important yeah. so that you can look at it on a day to day or a week by week basis. Where are we? What is it against our budget? Because with any of these projects, you will have a budget because no one goes into yep. this sort of project without knowing how much they're intending on spending. And they might be other investors as well, haven't they, that you need to keep happy? Exactly, you might need to be reporting back to investors on how you're going, where yeah. things are. And also, if you were very tight on your budget and very tight on your cash, if you do find things are going over, the question might be, I might need to talk to the investors, I might need to find a new investor yeah. to actually make sure you can complete on it because you don't want to be getting 90% through a project but you can't finish it because if you don't finish it, you're not going to get any income, exactly. so you're not going to pay for it. And speaking of income though, like you can see around us now, we've got all these multiple rooms, we've got a bathroom, we've got a kitchen area and all this sort of thing here. So realistically, what we want to be doing here is thinking about cost centres and making sure that, you know, if room five over here, for example, is late on the rent, that we can look after their rooms. And maybe if room six has had an additional cost this month, maybe we want to be making sure of it. How do you go about making sure that, especially on something of this scale, that you're recording those individual aspects? Because it's not just the whole building, is it? It's all those individual sections. The nice thing about some of the software that we do work with, which are things like QuickBooks, Xero, Hammer, all these different ones that are out there is, I know with one of mine, I do it on a room by room basis. So yeah. I've got one property in there for a location and then I class as our every individual room. So the benefit of having that sort of thing in place means that I can actually do very granular reports to go down to the nitty gritty of, right, which room has made what money for me? So what rent have I got? is there any specific expenses? So there might be repairs in that room and I put it to that room. Other household things, we just have a general account yep. so that you know what the overall cost of the property is. But then I can be seeing those fine details, which especially if you've got properties, which I've got properties with eight rooms, seven rooms, six rooms, five rooms, quite a range in our portfolio. You do want to be knowing exactly what um, it is and how it fits together because that will obviously make sure that you can manage your portfolio and see what's working and what's not working. It may be that the property's working but there's one particular room that just never seems to have anyone interested in it. And it may be you need to redecorate that room or do something. It may be it's too noisy and you need to get some soundproofing because it might be too noisy with the neighbour. There's all sorts of things that could be happening with these things. But if you don't know that you've got a problem with that specific room, you might think, oh, the property's not performing. No, it's not the property, it's a specific room yeah. that might not be performing. So there's quite a lot of information you can get using the right software. Okay, this room we're in here is a great example of how, in theory, it sounds like this is money for a rope. Like, it sounds like you're taking a room or a building and you convert it into multiple buildings and you're gonna earn more money per building. But you've told me some real horror stories, haven't you, about how every step of the way of a project can cause issues and problems. And like this room here, we know we've had to repurpose the room. We've had to change the way the room's going to be dealt with because we now know that the demand or the, the tenants that we're going to have here are going to be completely different to what we first bought. Is there any kind of tips and tricks you can give people? I know your channel kind of covers it a lot of it, doesn't it? 
Well, one thing I always find is, especially if you check out some of our videos on what we're doing on our projects, is one of the first things to do is what is your demand? Who are you actually letting out to? In this room, great example, because we've got kind of quite a modern feel, um, loving the lighting, it looks quite cool. Um, and it's really getting that feel. These days, it's not just about kind of, I suppose, Mathenia and brown carpets. People want more, they want something that looks nice. In some ways, if you would live there, then it's somewhere that someone's going to want to rent. For ours, we do both students and professionals, and this room has got a desk area looking at it and different things. So it's looking at your tenants and what they're going to want for that room and how it fits together. Because the more you make it fit for purpose for the different tenants, the easier you'll find it to left and also you'll be getting better rates because people will love being in that space and want to be there. And obviously the whole idea of these sorts of properties is you get them fully let. And if you can get them fully let, then you're going to be making the money, which then will help kind of give you the income you're looking at and also the income to maintain those properties, to keep them in a good nick, which then means you're going to maintain that income going forward as well. So whilst, when we were talking upstairs, we were talking about the fact that software is going to bring a huge part towards it. Now, I obviously, being the QuickBooks chap, are going to be looking mainly and primarily at trying to get people onto QuickBooks Online. Which you know I'm a lover of as well. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're in good company. <laughs> but the problem with it is, and I know, a bit of a spoiler here, I know that QuickBooks are bringing a rental um, addition to QuickBooks Online coming. And I know that's going to solve some of the issues that we have at the moment with QuickBooks for rental properties, because as good as the software is, you still need to do a little bit of hand-holding to make it work, don't you? Yes, definitely. So with that hand-holding in mind, and we've done lots of videos and you've done even better videos of that one, so make sure you get over to her channel and have a look at those videos. But the important thing for me that I find um, that QuickBooks does really well at is when we were talking upstairs about that, the idea that you can have multiple tenants and you can have multiple buildings and multiple rooms if you need to. And that's why I think QuickBooks has that strength. So we have the option up here, if we go to company cog, accounts and settings, go to um, the advanced section, you have all of these options of going into what we call categories of track classes and track locations. And that works well, doesn't it? It does. And I think the track locations works well for the property itself. And then the track classes can work really well for the rooms if you want to go to that granular detail, which for HMOs you will, for buy to lets if you're sticking with slightly simpler projects you're probably good with just the locations, but it definitely is um, a great way of doing it. And I know on my channel, there's a video on how to be using that side of things with um, QuickBooks for properties. Brilliant. Now, the other thing about QuickBooks as well is the fact that we get to use customers and sub-customers. So we do know that from time to time, if you jump into the customers area and you've got these customers we've got here, you then have the opportunity to add a sub-customer. So maybe in this Austin property one, that you might want to say, right, let's create a new customer and let's say it's room 101. And then that way we can make it as a sub customer. In fact, we'll do it as Apple call this one and press save. And then you can continue that side of things as well. So you do give you that opportunity to run and be able to keep an eye on and look at different elements that are going through the different rooms. Which that'd be great to keep track of arrears and things like that. So you'd be able to put on the invoices or the rent each month. And potentially if you know you've got a tenancy agreement for the next 12 months, you could put on your next 12 months invoices so that as the rent does come in, they could be matched. I have some people who want to do it that way. Others just do it from the bank feed and put it to the property. But there's quite a lot of options, which is obviously what we like to see. And then you can figure out exactly the best way to do it for how you want to manage your property company. Definitely. Now, we're not going to go too much into it now, but there has been some big news about the word, word of MTD, making tax digital. And now that's going to offend mental, especially a project like this where there's potential that there's going to be more than one person that you're going to have to report against. There's been big news from HMRC about how that's going to happen. And on QuickBooks, you know you're going to be supported. You know you're going to have that MTD side of things. MTD also. is going to be up and running on QuickBooks. I know, check out the videos on what MTD is and how it all works for landlords and property owners on my channel. But yes, I think QuickBooks, we are both confident. 
hundred percent that it will be able to tick the boxes to fulfill those requirements, aren't we? Exactly. And as you were saying upstairs, QuickBooks has all the tools to make it really easy. So we've got the ability to add in opportunities here and make it so it's really simple for us to actually work with our clients in terms of adding their bank account and be able to use your phone to take mileage and be able to take photos. And the reporting side of things is really powerful as well. So set up correctly, QuickBooks is an amazing solution for, for clients, but we found a solution a little bit better, haven't we, in terms of those clients who may not be quite as bookkeeping centric. That was the word, exact word I was going to say. QuickBooks is amazing for those which it is more, I suppose, a business. And it's probably, I tend to these days and recommending QuickBooks, especially for limited companies, as it works amazing for that. And because you've got to do formal statutory accounts, it gets you a TB, it gets everything that's needed for you and for the accountant. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about our other solution that we both quite enjoy. And that's this one called Hammock. Now we're going to do a full size video and a deep dive into this, but this is just having a look at basically what it can give you and what the opportunity is going to be. But think of Hammock as basically a version of QuickBooks that has been designed directly for actual rental properties. So this is for landlords and this is all about the landlord. This is not about accountants. This is, yes, about the finances, but this one has so many features that me as a landlord, I love. It's given me so much information about my properties and makes it so much easier to manage it all. And I say that from perspective of if I'm getting a remortgage, if I'm trying to do a fact find, all those bits of information which are an absolute nightmare to find, like your mortgage details and what's your loan to value and what's the value of the property, which obviously we can keep track of on a spreadsheet or you can keep manual records, but to have it all together in one place, this really has kind of opened up so many possibilities with Hammock as a software, as well as ticking all those boxes for the finances, the making tax digital as well. Yeah, exactly. It becomes an absolute no brainer, doesn't it? So we're quickly just putting the information in here. And as soon as we add the property. And it's amazing because this software, you can actually say it's a HMO. You can say how many rooms it is. And then in here, as you can see from what you're showing, Aaron, you can put all of the things like how much is the property worth? How much is the mortgage and all those details? And it also really lo lovely. It takes photos so you can actually see it, which doesn't really add any value whatsoever but it just is really lovely to be able to go on and you're not just looking for the name you can go oh and there's my property um which is just amazing to be able to see and yet yeah, as Aaron's doing you can just move it around to actually show the actual property so if it doesn't quite show the exact thing you can just tweak it so it shows your building for you well there we are that's where we nice are nice tree in the way I was going to say we've got a beautiful tree which has probably disappeared now but that's cool. Um, at least we know it's the right property. Excellent. Yeah, no, I, I really like this software. And for the clients that are on this, it's just so much more simplified for them. Again, QuickBooks is probably the more powerful solution for people who are in the know and want to get the most amount of finite details. But if you just want to keep track of a project, make sure that you're MTD compliant, make sure that you've got stuff ready for your own personal tax return, this software is actually hard to beat, isn't it? It is. And I literally was speaking to a client earlier this week and he was saying, I've got some in my name. I've got some in my company. I've got some in my wife's name. How do we go about doing this? And you can add different portfolios, which means he can have his portfolio for himself. He can have his portfolio for his wife and he can have his company portfolio all on the software. And the amazing thing is it does all the tax statement for you. So it will show what you need to put on your tax statement, what she needs to put on her tax statement and what's going in the company as well. So it kind of does all the, probably the techie calculations for you, which is amazing because um, it means you know what you're going to be reporting. And I've been talking to the guys uh, over at Hammock as well, and they've assured us that there's some really good features coming soon as well, including corporation as well. So having a limited company in here. That is one thing I know that they are working on um, very quickly, I think, to try and get that up and running. But Obviously, making tax digital has been one of their key things to make sure it fits that bill. And I think they're well on the way to having that all set up and up and running for, for it. The other thing that is quite core cool with Hammock is it will also show you your EPC. So with changes in the energy performance ratings that 
a rental property has got to have, you can actually go into the property and in the property there is the option to click at the top there on energy performance and it will tell you what the certificate shows. So if you are a C or above, thumbs up, you're okay. If you're not, if the changes do come in, you may be having to do some work to get the energy rating of the property up. So it's all these little quirky things that obviously QuickBooks is not going to be able to deliver some of those because it's not really what the software was designed for. But this one as the landlord focused one is really adding some of those extra features from that point of view. So it's it's great for a landlord as well as for an accountant. Definitely. Okay, so we've already teased enough. Whereabouts can people find you? Because obviously you are the expert when it comes to property. Where's the best place for people to find you? So check out the channel, Kimberly Shapcott Property Tax and Accountancy, which goes through so many different things from how to buy your properties to information about capital gains tax when you're selling things. And it's also got some of my own projects on as well, sharing um, my current project, which is a seven bed HMO conversion, which we've taken a terraced house and it's being converted into a seven bed. And soon there will be the new project that we've got on, which is a new buy to let that we purchased in this last year. Amazing. Thank you very much. If you like that video, then you're going to love our channel. This video was all brought to you by the people over at Boffix to give you some insight into exactly what to take from the world of accounting. As accountants ourselves, we pride ourselves on giving you the best in terms of information. And today's information all about HMO is exactly that. So don't forget to like, subscribe and get yourself involved in this channel. Let us know below. Have you got a HMO? Are you looking to bring software in to help and make it easy? Or are you looking to rental at all? Also, don't forget to look over at our sister channel where we go into that hammock software in a lot more detail. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Big thanks to Kimberly to being involved in today's video. And as I said before, don't forget to subscribe, like, and everything else to make sure that you're in the know into what's going on in the world of accountancy. My name's Aaron Patrick. Today has been a pleasure of a video to do for you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.